welcome to our Tuesday Reflections this Holy Week and we're going to start today um, as always with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And today's reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, Chapter 21, verses 18 to 22. Jesus shows the power of faith. Early the next morning, Jesus was going back to the city. He was very hungry. He saw a fig tree beside the road and went to get a fig from it. But there were no figs on the tree. There were only leaves. So Jesus said to the tree, you will never again produce fruit. The tree immediately dried up and died. When the followers saw this, they were very surprised. They asked, how did the fig tree dry up and die so quickly? Jesus answered, the truth is, if you have faith and no doubts, you will be able to do the same as I did to this tree and you will be able to do more. You will be able to say to this mountain, go mountain, fall into the sea. And if you have faith, it will happen. If you believe, you will get anything you ask for in prayer. And so today we are going to start our reflection by imagining that you're a tree. What sort of a tree would you be? What sort of fruit would you grow? Would it be sweet and juicy pears? Would it be cooking apples that are tart to eat but delicious in a pie? Maybe you grow coconuts with a shell that's hard to open but with a refreshing milk inside. And today, do you think you have been like a tree with lots to offer other people. Or are you a bit like the fig tree today? The fig tree in the story with nothing to offer a hungry passerby. And by that I mean, do you think you've been concentrating more on what's going on inside you than what you can do or be to those around you? Maybe someone's asked you for some help and you've not wanted to do it. Or maybe you have, maybe you've offered to do something without anyone asking. All trees have times when they haven't got any fruit on them, when they are resting and preparing, gathering nutrients from the ground and sunshine and rain so that they can produce more fruit at the right time. We should also do the same. You can imagine that our rain is the love that others shower on us. Our sunshine is the wholesome things we watch and listen to. Our nutrients are our lifestyles, what we eat, how we exercise and our prayer life. If we gather all those things inside us and make use of them, then, we are, then when we are approached by someone in need, then we will have fruit to offer them. So today, do you think that anyone has showered any love on you? Who was that person? And what about our sunshine? Where have we gathered sunshine for ourselves? Have we read some nice things? Have we watched some nice things? And our nutrients, what have you gathered inside you? Have you eaten well today or have you been snacking? Have you been outside and done anything? 
any exercise. And also our prayers, if you maybe thought about somebody else today and hope that they're okay. There are many passages in the Bible which can be difficult to read, and perhaps this is one of them. Not only does it appear to show Jesus having a bit of a strop because he's hungry, but it suggests that we that we're not believing hard enough if we can't uh, make a mountain fall over or make a fig tree wither. If you pause for a moment, you might reflect that his annoyance with the tree is that it's in the season when it should be bearing fruit, but it isn't. It's using up nutrients that other plants could be putting to good use, but not doing anything itself. You might think wearing down mountains through belief is pretty far-fetched, but think again. Think about the Facebook post that inspired the whole country to applaud the NHS from their front doors and balconies. Think about the impact that one person can have on an entire country. Can you name someone who you think has had a, a, a great impact, either locally maybe in your school or nationally or internationally. Some of them are older people, but I'm fairly sure you can probably think of at least one young person who's made a great difference. And that's been through faith, through belief in what they're doing is right and important. And that maybe other things have to be have to be given up in order for that important thing to be done. And so the candle we're looking at today is maybe a chance to think about ourselves. And is our candle a light in the same way that we were asking about whether our tree was bearing fruit? What's the nicest thing you've done today? And what's the nicest thing that someone has done for you today? Has someone shone a light for you? Maybe someone sent you a message. Maybe someone got you breakfast without you asking. Spend a little time looking at the candle and thinking, how you can shine your light, how you can bear your fruit after we finish today. What could you do for someone else? Is there someone you know, like Jesus, who was hungry and needed something? And could you be the person to offer it? Is there someone in your house that really needs a hug? Or is there someone who's maybe a far away that you could draw a picture for, send a message to? And finally, Jesus was talking about having enough faith that we could make a mountain fall into, a, into the sea. Maybe you could think about a mountain, not maybe a real mountain, but a metaphorical mountain that needs some work, needs some help to make it fall into the sea. Maybe what you think is most important is climate change. Maybe it's plastic in the seas. Maybe it's keeping people healthy. So what can you do to erode that mountain? If your mountain is plastic, what can you do today? What can you do this week? Use this last little bit to say a prayer, either in your head or out loud. 
maybe asking for help, maybe asking for some guidance. And praying for others who have faith with you, who will help you. So we'll end again, as we always do, with the grace. And some people say it in different ways to others, so you may decide, all of you, that this is a moment of stillness and our own thoughts, so you may want to sit with your eyes shut. Or you might want to be like other people and maybe stand up and hold hands while you say it and look at each other. So this is a pair for everyone. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.